What is up guys and welcome back to another strategically timed career mode episode perfectly aligning with the co-op championship. The most effective form of practice is doing practice while making videos at the same time. So if you guys have any ideas what I should do for the next episode in co-op, that being Canada next week, let me know. We managed to do like three Monaco <laughs> videos last week. How many Baku videos can we do this week? I guess we'll have to wait and see, but I've got Baku tonight for co-op if you want to check that out. It's probably happening right now as you're watching this. Live on Twitch, link in the description. Hopefully we can put Alex in the mud once again, but let's get back to this video at hand. Career mode, my team. Uh, we previously won the last race, so we've got a bit of momentum behind the team. So let's hopefully capitalize on that and put pressure on the likes of the Mercedes and the Red Bulls in this phase of the season where I think we should be pretty strong. Uh, Baku isn't really, uh, well, it has been a strong track for the AI in the past, but the way that the AI achieved their lap time now is in high speed corners and Baku, guess what? Has none of them. So I'm expecting a good race here, uh, particularly with some of the upgrades we're gonna target heading into this one. Uh, the major one being Drag reduction. It's no secret that Baku has the world's longest straight and taking away all drag is a good thing. And we can squeeze that on in time for this race. Ultimate drag reduction upgrade going on in time for this race. 13% chance of failure. And I mean, we failed with better odds than that before, so I'm not going to get too ahead of myself. Fast forwarding time now as we approach the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Weekly resources coming in. Do we get the upgrade? Yes is the answer. So drag reduction has been maximized on this car. And I think with that, we have now maxed out the entirety of the aero department. We have all the downforce upgrades, we have all the drag reduction upgrades. I'm pretty sure we've got all the DRS upgrades as well. So that is the aero department completed. And now we can just focus on the engine side and a little bit of chassis stuff. Um, so let me know in the comments, guys, what you want to see upgraded next on the car. We got brakes. I think the brake debacle is now put to rest. I think I can put that down to my mod being a bit funny at the time using old game files. I think that's what was stuffing me up back in the day. So I think break, break upgrades are a good way to go. Weight redistribution might be a good shout too. We had, we had a wet session in FP1. Um, it's not really relevant because the, the rest of the weekend is going to be dry, but uh, compared to our competitors, we were actually pretty, pretty good in the wet. So it's a shame that there's no interchangeable conditions on the way for the rest of the weekend, but we got through practice two. P7, seven tenths off the likes of the Red Bulls. Sergio Perez looks very, very mighty around this circuit, and that is the performance index update uh, with the ultimate drag reduction upgrade. Not as much of a spike as you'd expect it to be, but it puts us within touching distance of McLaren and Ferrari. But this being a, a circuit where it's all about you know drag reduction and chassis, I think we might be able to bring ourselves closer to those front-running teams. This is a bravery circuit after all. But anyway, Friday practice, one and done. Got all the resource points we needed. Now let's head into qualifying. Time for quality then for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Let's hopefully not do a Charles Leclerc and stick it in a barrier at the castle section. I, I personally, I'm not too sure there's many other people who share this sentiment with me. I find this track more difficult than Monaco. I find it hard, particularly, particularly at this corner here, the castle section turning in. I don't really know where, where the braking point is. I kind of just guess. There's, there's no real reference. There's no landmark there. I just brake and turn in. And when you're trying to push the car to its limits, easy to get caught out. As is that corner right there, the downhill left-hander. Very easy to get spat out by the curb, which is quite high on this year's game. Very close to the track limits there on exit of pretty much the last corner. So, um, yeah, it, it's very easy to get caught out around here by just pushing that a little bit too hard. With Monaco, I find it a lot easier. Um, 
I, I don't know why. I just do. I, I know exactly where I'm braking, when I'm turning in, how much speed I can carry. With Baku, there's a little bit of guesswork in that. You'll have to let me know if, if you guys feel the same. I, I might be uh, in the minority there. Maybe I just need to do more running around here. I did do a lot of laps back in the day on um, F1 20... 2018 or 2017, I can't remember which which it was. I um, was trying to qualify for F1 Esports and I did hours and hours of practice around here. So I've got a fairly good affinity with this place, but um, the profiling of some of the curves has changed and as such, not as good as what I used to be around here, uh, particularly in Sector 3. But anyway, that's me diving a little too deeply into uh, the me mechanics of the game. Let's get out for our final run in Q2. Um, you might have noticed I did a... Exploratory lap on the soft compound tires and I did a little bit of a, a sandbag run up to the line because I actually want to qualify on the mediums to uh, Make the race a little bit more flexible for us um, rear tire wear around here is Absolutely massive. So I want to minimize a bit of that give myself some flexibility start on the mediums and finish the race on softs if That is at all possible. It should be with the tire upgrades. We've got now uh, pretty much maxed out in terms of that. But this lap so far has actually been very, very good. I'd, I'd say this is my best lap of the entire weekend. I'm going to spoil it. I make it into Q3 here. But there's something about these medium compound tires which made the balance of the car feel absolutely amazing. Um, I wasn't getting any oversteer, uh, the traction was really good on these tires for some reason. I could just feel exactly what the limit of the car was, particularly in the first half of the lap. All those 90 degree left right corners I was really nailing that section. We're up by eight tenths as we approach the, uh, the finish line and there's more time to gain because we did break at the end of our uh, banker run on the sauce. So we should be able to improve here by Maybe a second. This might put us up with the leaders here. Across the line, it puts us in P2. The lead runner on the medium compound tire. Faster than the Ferraris, faster than the McLarens, and the Mercedes, and the Red Bulls. Which is absolutely ridiculous. Some of those guys, nearly a second off. And the Red Bull is the best car. So, for whatever reason, we've chucked on the medium compound tire, and it's actually worked better, in my opinion, than the softs. So, we've got to make some changes heading into Q3. I made some tire pressure adjustments, which made things a little bit nicer in terms of getting the, the balance right for front, front grip to rear grip. And I think it did make a difference. It put us a little bit closer to the front running pack in Q3, but still not as impressive as our Q2 run. So, um, it seems that this car is happier on mediums, at least on a circuit like this. So heading into the race, I'm probably going to spend as much time as possible on the mediums and hope that, you know, I can just do a couple of laps maybe at the end on, on softs. So that's the game plan. I imagine the AI will be using hards in this race. They are a little bit conservative with their strategies, so we'll have to uh, think about that with our uh, race strategy. But and either way... Uh, we're looking pretty good. Our pace is going to be phenomenal in the race, I would hope. And then uh, once the AI get on the hards, it should be GG, really. <laughs> but we'll have to wait and see. There might be some two stops. Hard to predict at Baku with all the tire upgrades for various teams, but let's not waste any more time. Let's get into it and go for P1. And a warm welcome to you from Azadlik Square, heart of Baku and home, of course, to the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. With high speeds, tight corners and few runoff zones, many are expecting a safety car here today. So our drivers will have to stay very much on their toes and hopefully away from the barriers. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's race. Young superstar Max Verstappen starts from pole position and talented Spaniard Carlos Sainz completes the front row. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Leclerc, Perez, Daniel Ricciardo and Bottas, Benjamin, Hamilton, Norris and Nico Rosberg, Ocon, Vettel, Daniel Tictum and Latifi, Stroll, Sonoda, George Russell, 
and Antonio Giovinazzi, Armstrong, Mick Schumacher, Gasly and Nikita Mazepin. Now that we've got some points on the board, let's continue this form and aim for another top 10 finish. I was expecting some grid penalties today, but that is not the case. Possibly from the next race onwards, we'll see some reliability demons creep into some of these Formula 1 teams. In terms of the strategy, we are going to do the one stop on the personalized strategy based on our uh, tire wear numbers. It's going to be absolutely fine to run them with the two softest compound of tire. The AI, though, that's going to be a little bit more tricky. Are they going to try and stretch the mediums? I mean, they should be able to do the same strategy as me, but the AI love a conservative strategy. So I'm expecting at least half of them to run the hards. So we'll have to wait and see. Maybe even some people doing a two-stop, which would be pretty ridiculous. But five red lights, and we are... Underway, finally, for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix, side by side with Bottas, or at least I'd hope to be heading into turn one. Not as good of a start in the second phase as I would have liked as we nearly oversteer into the path of the Mercedes. Side by side into turn two now. We'll force Bottas to go a little bit compromised into there. We get the better exit, and now we're in P6 in this Azerbaijan Grand Prix, stealing the slipstream of Ricardo and Perez ahead as we head into turn three. And we're able to see off the threat of Bottas. Perez not getting a great run out of there. And that leaves him completely open for a move into turn four. We're in the top five now, lads. And this race is suddenly looking pretty good, at least for a podium at bare minimum. Carlos Sainz absolutely struggling. I'm not sure if he's got front wing damage or what, but he's lost uh, a lot of ground compared to Max Verstappen, who is now leading this Grand Prix. So... Yeah, that's been a bit of a tricky start. We'll hopefully get a, a replay up or something like that. See what happened in those opening laps. But um, yeah, let's focus on the job at hand and try and march forward with this leading pack. If we can, here's Sergio Perez in the slipstream. No DRS. No DRS. That was a half little move there from Sergio. And he's left him vulnerable in the turn two. He gets gobbled up by Bottas. Or does he? No, he, uh, he, Bottas can't overtake anyone, it seems. So he's uh, still in P7 in this uh, opening stanza of the Grand Prix. Ricardo up next. First warning of the race, which is not ideal, but thankfully this place isn't actually too bad for track limits. There's not really too many places you can get caught out. So I think I think we should be fine for penalties for the rest of the race. We'll just rein it in at that part of the circuit. The outside curbing there at turn one as well. Can get a warning there, so... Something to watch out for. Ricardo now on the mediums. Uh, going around the outside of Carlos Sainz to turn one. Sainz gets a horrible run and gives up the position to me as well. It almost looked like a orchestrated move, like he was on my team or something. Because that was so smooth. Too smooth, even. Here's the replay. Carlos was getting no drive out of turn one. I think he was worried about losing the back end or crashing or something. And just completely got out of the throttle and allowed us to sweep around the outside and into P4 in this race. So now it is the medium compound runners in control of this race. Verstappen on mediums, Leclerc mediums, Ricardo obviously on mediums as well. So it's gonna be a long old stint this first one, but it looks like we've got the pace on those around us to do some damage in this race. Around the outside of Ricardo, just like he did to Carlos Sainz on the last lap. And that is job done. We are now on the podium, legitimately on the podium. In this race, we are recovering ground. We are recovering in terms of the car's performance and is now starting to show on circuit. We've overtaken a McLaren, which is, well, at least on the performance index, it looks like they're a few tons faster than us. So we should be behind them. Instead, we're ahead. Thank you very much. Nicholas Latifi is out of the Grand Prix. That could cause a safety car engine failure on the way into the pit lane. He doesn't block the pit lane. So that should be, well, a pretty easy reconnaissance job for the marshals, to be honest. So I don't think we'll get any interruptions from those guys, at least at this stage. Anyway, Leclerc up next, 1.6 seconds to him. And then Verstappen leading by quite some margin, utilizing the DRS we got off of uh, Ricardo to get a fast up. Easy as you like. So that, pre oh my goodness, that's not ideal. That pretty much reaffirms the pace that we've got in this race. It's backed up from qualifying on the medium compound tire. We seem to have pretty good speed. Carlos Sainz is in now for his mediums. 
Uh, and that looks like he is on a two-stop in this race. I don't think the Ferrari, at this early stage, can get to the end on mediums. Okay, clear. Or if they can, it's going to be a long old stretch. Lando Norris is out of the Grand Prix! He's also got an engine failure, so some of these AI teams not opting for new components, and they are now paying the price. Some information on Norris. They are out of the race. No shit, Sherlock. Anyway, lap eight. We are pretty much same pace, or maybe just faster, than the race leaders. The gap is pretty similar, but we are catching Verstappen on the straight. Safety, Safety car! car. Safety car has race. been deployed, and that is a bit of a... Well, to be honest, a bit of a delayed response from the stewards there. Uh, because Norris retired about a minute ago, but they finally decided to do so. Ricardo has opted to react and jump onto a new set of tyres. We are going to do the same. Yeah, we're going to do the same. It's, uh, it's a free pit stop. We might as well. It's not ideal in terms of our race strategy because we can't go softs to the end. That's way too far out. The softs would absolutely die. Can't go mediums because we started on those, so we have to go onto the hard compound tyres to see out this race on a one-stop. But it looks like none of the leaders really responded there. Um, Verstappen and was was it Leclerc? No more yeah, Leclerc stayed stopped. out. So that's an interesting one there. Ricardo behind me on softs now. And he's going to have amazing pace once we get back up to green flag running. And then Perez, I think, has made a stop as well, but he's gone on to another set of mediums. So... Very interesting strats here from the AI. Um, if what I've asked Jeff is true, then Verstappen is yet to do another two stops in this race. Two stops! Same with um, the Ferrari, Leclerc. Apparently he's doing another two stops in this race. Not really sure about the Mercedes, haven't asked about them. But um, that is, that is, that's just game over for Verstappen's race, if that is the case. Safety car is coming in at the end of this lap. It looks like it's going to be myself and Ricardo leading the way for the rest of the Grand Prix. Maybe Perez as well, fighting for the win. That looks like the adjusted order for the rest of this race. Back to green flag running, a couple of hesitations from the AI. But we're back to full speed. Around the outside of Bottas we go on the slower tyre, in the slower car. At least on paper. Bottas under pressure from Ricardo now. He's on the soft compound tyres. That's a massive send into turn two. And he gets the job done. Ricardo is going to be miles faster than everyone else. We'll just have to limit the damage. Not hold him up too much. Follow him through. And then... Okay, they boxed already. Well, that's GG. Well done, Leclerc. Well done, Verstappen. That's amazing race strategy you've got there. That Honestly, that really needs to be sorted out by the AI, by, by Codemasters. You can't have AI boxing for well, like one, two laps after a safety car has ended. That makes no sense. The Mercedes are double stacking! As if it, as if it could get any worse in terms of strategic decisions. Mercedes are double stacking. Maybe not by choice for Bottas there as he had a front wing change. But regardless, that's all the top contenders out of the running. Uh, I've hit the wall there with my right rear tyre. Thankfully, we are still in the race. No floor damage or anything of the like. Here comes Ricardo on the soft compound tyres. This right here is inevitable. We just got to let it happen. He's yet to make another stop in this race. So we can afford to let him go. We're going to get his slipstream and DRS. I guess the true threat now. Who is the true threat? Because it's not Perez either. He started on mediums. And he's put on another set of mediums, so he has to make another stop as well. Carlos Sainz? What are we saying? He started on sauce. He might be able to go to the end. But it's going to be a real stretch. Then you've got Rosberg, my teammate. Is this going to be a 1-2 for Marduk Motorsport? Because he started on softs and is now on mediums and has got the same tyre wear age as what I... Uh, same tyre wear rate as I do. So this could be a 1-2 for the team if this keeps up. I need to send a message over to Rosberg to not box again in this race because I have my suspicions that he probably will do so. Mediums, at least without tyre upgrades, will easily make it to the end, Nico. So please don't do anything silly in this race. Anyway, Ricardo looks like he's shaping for a move into the pit lane. And that's going to give us a lead with 12 laps to go. No, it doesn't because Sergio Perez fancies a move for the lead. So there you go. We didn't have DRS on that straight, to be fair. So we weren't really able to defend ourselves. Even 
Even with all the drag reduction upgrades, we are still susceptible to moves under DRS. So, fair enough. <laughs> the Red Bull is a, is a much faster car. Oh, well, decently faster than us. Uh, at least it should be on the performance index. And Rosberg is in! Rosberg, what are you doing? He could have made this a 1-2 for the team. But no, you've had to go and ruin it. He was only two and a half seconds behind me at that stage. But um, he's opted for another set of tyres. Not the choice I would have made in all honesty, but the AI are playing it very conservatively today with the tyre strategy. Perez is ahead of you. Gap to car in front is 1.2 seconds. They're on old mediums. Their tyres are six laps old. We think they've got one more stop. The time last lap was a 1 minute 37.0. Perez is on a bit of a mission here. He's actually flying. He's, he's quite fast at this stage of the Grand Prix, albeit with a stop to make in this race. There's a Williams in P6, um, by the way, or at least in the top five. And I believe that's Dan Tictum. So, yeah, that's that's pretty mad. Dan Tictum is in P5 right now. Make that fourth place. Or is he? No, he's boxing. I think everyone else on the mediums is boxing right now. Verstappen shoots up into P4. So, yeah, we're losing... A lot of rivals, a lot of unorthodox strategies today, it must be said. But we're approaching the end game of this race now. Sergio Perez has boxed. He was five seconds up the road. Five seconds up the road when he made his pit stop. He might be half a chance to get into P2 again in this race. He's going on to the soft compound tires, which are going to be massively fast for the rest of the race. And he's only 10 seconds behind me. So normally a pit stop delta is around about 20, 25 seconds. Here, remaining. Perez has only lost 15 seconds. So he's only 10 seconds and catching me by two seconds a lap. He might actually be on me by the end stage of the Grand Prix. So I've been chilling. I've been cruising in the last five laps or so because I knew I had this race in the bag. But maybe that's not the case. I've got to sweat for this a little bit in the dying laps. Perez is catching me by two seconds a lap. The gap is four and a half seconds with three laps to go. He will be on me on the last lap. So I've got to get out of tire conserving mode. I've got to get out of engine and gearbox conserving mode and just go hell for leather. It's one and a half seconds with two laps to go. We're lapping a Mercedes who just comes out of the pit lane on a set of soft compound tires. So Bottas's day, it's gone from bad to worse, but my day could well be spoiled here as well. One and a half laps to go in this Azerbaijan Grand Prix. And I thought that this race got handed to me on a silver platter. Turns out I'm still going to have to work for this. The Red Bull is absolutely sublime on the softer compound attire. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. The pace, not going to lie, hasn't been great on the hards. Even now when I'm pushing, I'm not making that much more pace than what I was. Maybe two or three tenths if that's so it's uh it's panic stations now as we head on to the uh the end game of this race Perez goes on the inside into the last proper corner and that's going to compromise his run all the way down the straight this might actually help me because he's got no momentum heading out of this s curve but uh yeah here we go this is straight up drag race time between us and the red bulls we head on to the last lap of this azerbaijan grand prix we are negative in terms of fuel as well so it's not looking good in terms of the race win thankfully we've got the drag reduction working wonders for us we head into turn one Perez round the outside unable to make that work we're going to squeeze him out to the wall every single time especially when we're fighting for the race win like this so um yeah Sergio is going to have to come up with a better idea of getting past us but now in this middle part of the lap we can afford to actually lift and coast a little bit just to make sure that we can actually finish the race at full throttle there's no way you can really overtake us here we're actually not too bad at this section of the track he's uh not really utilizing the ers as much as i thought he would maybe he used it on the last lap just to try and get past but he, he, he burned too much of his ers so that might be something to watch as we head on to the final drs straight but I don't know. I don't know whether I want to be in front or behind. We managed to fend him off last time, but that was with Sergio having no run up. He's going to go for it now as we head into the downhill left hander. We're actually going to let him have this and we're going to have the DRS. We're going to be the chaser as we head up to the line. So all we got to do now 
is stay somewhat close to Sergio Perez. We have better straight line speed than him, but that is not a good exit. Oversteer on the curb, the traction on the hard compound tires is absolutely diabolical. Out of the last corner, pretty much flat out. Sergio is out of ERS, and we're gonna get DRS in 100 meters time. This is the run to the line to decide this race. Red Bull or Marduk Motorsport, and it's the Red Bull. Well done, good finish. You stepped up and achieved what we asked. Good oh job. man, why are we celebrating? Why is Jeff happy? We have just lost a race win. Tell me, Ant, how did they manage to achieve this win? Well, they played the safety car to absolute perfection. There are so many factors to worry about once the race is neutralized. I mean, do you pit for fresh rubber? Do you have the space behind you? How much fuel can you save? If you answer all of those questions correctly, you'll have a good chance. And that's exactly what happened today. The drivers are en route to the podium as we speak. What a fantastic win for the Red Bull team. They performed exceptionally today, keeping us firmly on the edge of our seats throughout the entirety of the race. Congratulations to everyone at the team. Oh my God. We just lost to Perez. We did a two-stop in this race. We have lost to a two-stopper at Baku. How, how has that happened? Honestly, we had like pretty much a pit stops lead on Sergio. When he came out of, well, he was, he was five seconds up the road when he made his pit stop. Pretty much a pit stops lead. But old hards versus fresh softs. There was no drop off for Sergio. He just kept going and going and going. And the gap, like I, I had nothing. I had no, no response. I was giving everything on the hard compound tires, but there was just... Nothing there, unfortunately. What a what a sour I mean it's exciting of course, but it just it sucks for me because that race I feel like was ours. I, I really feel like that was ours. The AI really stuffed it up in terms of strategy, at least so I thought. Um, people on two stops or people using hard compound tires. Uh, look, I'm the guy who used hard compound tires in the end. It was a very untimely safety car, it's gotta be said. Um we, we wanted to use the mediums for the majority of the race, but safety car kind of kind of ruined those plans. Maybe, and, and maybe in hindsight, I should have just not boxed on the safety car, stayed on the mediums and then boxed for softs near the end like Sergio did, or conversely, come in, put on the hards for one lap, and then come in again, still on the safety car, and put another set of mediums on. I think either way, that would have been a better choice, potentially, than what we had today. So, yeah, it's it's a shame. Baku, it's it's impossible to defend position here with the, the massively long DRS straight. Um, it's it's pretty much a freebie if you're giving someone DRS behind. Uh, wait, no. I was the guy behind and I couldn't... Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. We got close, though. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to stop talking. So, I... Stop digging myself a hole. Should have won that Grand Prix. We didn't. Fair play to Sergio. He did earn that. He did earn that. But we've got to bounce back stronger. We need to be winning races while we can because we're nearing the uh, the, the end of life development cycle of this car. It's not going to get much faster than what it is. And I don't know what the uh, potential performance of the AI is. They could keep going. But hopefully not. Anyway... Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel to see plenty more racing game content. And make sure to join me live on Twitch right now for co-op. If you're watching this video when it's come out, if not, you can watch the VOD. Link in the description. Thank you guys. And I'll see you next time.